Hello, Born Review Nation! Yes, every time I get to go first. Boring Lent. <laughs> Gabe. Nick. And we're here today to give you guys a video. This is a labor of love for us. Um, we wanted to try to get it out a week ago, or but we've just been so busy. But it's going to be our, now that we're in 2020, it's going to be our 2019 Top 10 Films. Now, first and foremost, let us say... I always laugh when people's like, I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion. By definition, if you're giving me your opinion, then it's biased, okay? <laughs> so these are completely what? biased. Look at the shirt I got on, people. You're probably going to get some comic book movies in there. That's how we started this channel, talking about comic books. And, you know, we're, 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 both, we're both geeks about it. So more than likely, there's going to be some comic book films in there. Spoiler. But, yes, it's going to be a biased list. I'm not saying these are the top ten... Uh, uh, um, movies of the year. These are just my top 10 from and the films list. I saw. I didn't see all the films. You know, I'm not a glutton for punishment. I'm sorry. And there were a couple films that came out that I saw and that, that were great. And there were a couple films I saw that weren't great. But there were also some films that, 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 that came out and I was like, I have no interest in seeing that. I don't want to torture myself through two and a half hours yes. of this garbage. Yeah, we didn't see every film first and foremost. We didn't always already, we actually see the same movies that each other saw. Right. We saw them separately most of the time. And like he said, my top 10 is just based off when I watched that movie, how much did I enjoy it? How much did I think about it afterwards? How much did I want to see it again? That's it. So there might be a movie that's technically better that's on my number eight or nine than one. Doesn't matter. It's the movies that got me the most excited this year at this point in time by the end of 2019 Am I still thinking about it? So, without further ado, let's start with some honorable mentions. I'll start us off with my three honorable mentions. So, my first honorable mention is a movie I saw in November. It's not a big time movie, but it's called Harriet. It's about Harriet Tubman. I, I really enjoyed this film. If you haven't seen it yet, it's not available right now, but check it out when it does become available on Blu-ray and streaming services. Great story. I'm not sure how true it is to the you know, her real story. I have read a few books on her and a lot of it did seem pretty um, pretty true to that. So Harry is an honorable mention. Another honorable mention I have is How Could You Not Have a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? Tom Hanks plays Fred Rogers. I fell in love with Fred Rogers when I watched a documentary on him, Won't You Be My Neighbor, a few years back or a year and a half. And so this movie came out. Tom Hanks does a fantastic job. It gives us a great story of this reporter and Fred Rogers and this reporter trying to figure out is he really that nice? <laughs> right, right, and right, spoiler right. alert, he is. Great film, not a uh, not really a slow moment in it, even though it's about Fred Rogers who talked rather slowly. And then my last honorable mention, I've got to do it. It was number ten, but Rise of Skywalker what? is not in my top ten. Blasphemer for me. Blasphemer. I <laughs> I look forward to Star Wars. <laughs> So much whenever there's a new one coming out. I'm so mad that we don't have a plan on when the next one's going to come out. They keep saying 2022 or something like that. But I got to put it in my honorable mention just because it was a great wow. time. I enjoyed the movie a lot. There was issues I had with it, and I uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I watched it a second time. I enjoyed it the second time as well. But these other movies, they just kind of resonate with me more. Right. Probably because the expectations were so high for Rise wow. of Skywalker. I mean, I get that, but as a Star Wars fan, and we both grew up during that era, I mean, it's one of our things we struck up our friendship over. Star Wars and comic books, like, wow, I was shocked. You just did a time of the sword and dropped a hat on the floor. <laughs> you know what? I've got to see every movie on your top ten list. <laughs> Obviously, we haven't shared these with each other. We wanted it to be blind. But the man who says biased opinion. I'm just saying, yes, of course it's biased. I'm going to have to see every movie on this list. All right. And I will torture you the rest of the year. Like, this is better than Rise of Skywalker. Really? Really? So, <laughs> I want to hear your honorable mention. But just so you know, when you're seeing the graphics of the videos, the movie posters, I'm going to be putting the poster over the person that's not talking. Okay? So, I'm not doing that to try to block him <laughs> out or block myself out. But it's just his list, so it's going to be here. My list is going to be right there. Go for it. What's your honorable mention? All right. My first honorable mention was probably the first movie I saw in 2019. I really wanted to get it in my top 10 list, but I had some problems with the way they executed the ending, and that was Glass. Glass was fabulous. I love James McAvoy. He's become one of my favorite actors. Just for his acting performance alone, 
you should watch that movie. I had some problems with the ending. I don't think that M. Night Shyamalan knew which way he wanted to go. The ending but, really messed things up. But, but you I know, still enjoyed it. Other than that, I enjoyed the film, so watch it. If anything else, just for his performance alone. His performance was amazing. Glass. All right, another honorable mention I have on there. And, you know, I, I struggled with this because I re recency bias, but I saw it, and it was Marriage Story. Now, I had mentioned in the video when we did Rise of Skywalker, I didn't realize what a good actor Adam Driver was. I hadn't seen him in anything else. So I'm like, other than Star Wars, as Kylo Ren. So I said, okay, let me watch this. It's a romantic movie. Let me watch it with Savannah. Holy cow, this movie's amazing. And as for the argument, can Scarlett Johansson act? Because other than being a hot chick, name one thing she's been in that she's a really good actress. Come on, let's be honest. She can act, man. Well, they're this already saying she's going to be nominated an Oscar for This it. movie is amazing. It's uncomfortable, though. It's one of those movies where, as a married couple, you have to sit back and reflect, like, man, am I doing some of these things? And, and if you are divorced, then you will see these things and you'll say to yourself, you know what? I saw that some of that story in my own story. So, man, it's one of those tear jerkers, very emotional movie. It's amazing. I wanted to get in the top ten, but I think that the... The subject or the topic is so uncomfortable that it's a movie you're not going to want to watch more than one time because once you see, you, you've, you've seen it, if you've experienced that, you don't want to relive that. And if you haven't experienced that, okay, it's a cautionary tale. I know what not to do because I want to keep my marriage together. You know what I mean? So uh, that's why I didn't get into my top 10. And then the last one, again, we talked about this. You know, I'm a huge, huge comic book fan, huge comic book fan. I absolutely love Shazam. I know some people killed Shazam. Uh, uh, um, first of all, on the costume or whatever, I love Shazam. I thought it was funny. I love the fact that they put some horror elements in there. Um, it was the right type of, it had a lot of levity in there. And honestly, between Shazam and right before that, it was in December um, of 2018, we got Aquaman. If not for those two movies, DC dies, honestly, <laughs> because wow. it dies after BVS, after the disaster that was BVS. And then even though I like Justice League, what did it do? It didn't even do a billion dollars, I think, no, at the box office. Hit, you know, hit $700 million. $700 million. That million. I thought the studio was done. I thought they were going to end up being, uh, being sold just like Fox. But... Luckily, we got Aquaman, and right after that, we got Shazam, and Shazam is awesome. So, it's a good family mo movie. You know, it's always a good movie when you can still quote a line from it, and I, it's been months since I saw it. Little girl goes in the, they're in the strip club when they uh, uh, teleport in there, and she's like, ooh, where'd you get that glitter? I like glitter. No, not that kind of glitter. <laughs> they were lying, man. It's hilarious. But uh, those are my three honorable mention, all right? So, now we're going to count down from 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Nick, I defer to you. What is your... Do we want to do 10, number 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, kind of like that? Let's do it that way. All right. So my number 10 is a film I saw in November with my son. We're talking about Knives Out. So this is Ryan Johnson making a comeback after The Last of Jedi. After <laughs> The Last Jedi came out and the fans turned on him. Knives Out is a lot of fun. And it's a good story. It's got great acting. You got Captain America in there. You got Christopher Plummer still rocking things. You got Jamie Lee Curtis, so many awesome actors, Tony Collette and Michael Shannon. I mean, there's so many actors in this movie. It's a who done it, but it's done in an unconventional way, and it's just it's a whole lot of fun. And I left that theater, and I'm still thinking about it. So, Knives Out is my number ten. Okay, okay, my number ten. You know, again, comic book guy here is a movie called Brightburn. Brightburn did not get a lot of love, <laughs> and I was angry about it. The only top 10 that has Brightburn. I'm telling you, watch the movie. If you watch that movie <laughs> and you tell me some of the other garbage some people are talking on top 10, you're not being candid. It, first of all, it's a comic book movie. <laughs> it says garbage. <laughs> but it's, dude, it is a horror film. I have not had, I saw all the horror films this year, and this was one of the scarier ones, and on top of that, they tie it into the comic book genre. It was awesome. The kid in there was also the guy that played in Avengers um, Endgame. He was the one that played young, um, oh, young Lang, young um, Ant Man. Remember when they when, oh, when yeah, Ant Man yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, starts going back in time and comes out as a kid? That's the kid. This kid can act. When you're afraid of a little skinny twelve year old kid like that, and this kid is menacing. The movie is awesome. Watch it. It's already on DVD. It's already on um, streaming services. Watch it. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. My number 10 film of the year, Brightburn. All right. We're looking at nine now. My number nine film is a little movie that I saw not too long ago. 
with Benedict Cumberbatch, we're talking about The Current War. This is a movie about um, the electricity wars between Westinghouse and Edison. And this has got some great acting in it. It tells a very interesting story that I didn't know too much about. Um, the only thing I knew about Westinghouse is that the company now makes some really bad cheap TVs that go on sale on Black Friday. <laughs> but both in their own right really pioneered what we have for electricity today. Um, you can still buy Edison light bulbs, which are a different style than regular light bulbs. But it's a great story. Even got Tom Holland in it. Um, got some MCU actors in there. And he plays Edison the secretary. And he's got some funny lines. He's got some good moments. Um, it's just really, really good. The women in this movie are very strong um, female characters who are supporting their husbands who are strong male characters. So it's it's definitely worth a watch. All right. For me, number nine, you know what? It, this was a movie and I, and I struggled with it a little bit, but I wanted to get it up higher, but I couldn't. But The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, we talked about when we saw the review, like, man... Is this going to work? It's black and white. And then I was interested to see Robert Pattinson to see if he can act. Because I've never seen him in anything other than uh, um, him being Edward from Twilight. And come on. That was not. He admits it himself. It wasn't good acting. And then uh, uh, he was in that movie with uh, 9-11. You know what I mean? The building at the end. Uh, it was like a romantic comedy or whatever. You know, I didn't think his performance was too strong. So I'm like, this is who our next Batman is going to be? I was livid. You remember. You you had to talk me off the ledge after watching this. He's I have be so awesome so much faith. He can act. Not only he can act, he was... It's hard when it's just a two-man cast, basically. And you're up against, in my opinion, one of the great... Not necessarily main, uh, main actors, but he's one of the greatest uh, 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 supporting actors in Hollywood. William Defoe. I love William Defoe. He's awesome and um you got to watch him in boondock saints if you haven't seen boondock saints yet that's when i was oh, introduced so to him he's i mean he's in so many different movies you're right he was in aquaman he was he, he was in aquaman <laughs> he was also in spider-man so this guy's a really really prolific actor and to be able to sit across from him and again this movie the way the, the director shot it in black and white it's very claustrophobic a lot of time the camera camera pans and it's just them two in the frames it, it, it was shot beautifully and, and it's so it builds up so much uh, uh, um intensity during the, the during this film I loved it I, I promise you this is probably gonna get some kind of award I know Oscar season is still a couple months away but I loved it you gotta watch it and again try to understand the fact that this is just could you imagine doing an entire movie we're on camera for like 15 20 minutes together they're on there for two plus hours and you're still engaged. This is a great film. Number eight. We're looking at number eight, and I have, as my number eight, couldn't find it for a second, we're looking at Toy Story 4. Now, I did not, like Sean Chandler says on his channel, I did not think we needed Toy Story 4, but I love the Toy Story movies. I have a special place in my heart for the first one and the other ones after that. And so Toy Story 4 came out. Can't wait to see it. And it did not disappoint. It tells us basically the story of Woody and what's going to happen with him. And it introduces some new characters. The um, the villain in this, a uh, little girl doll, she's definitely creepy. But she has a good story too. So I had to put Toy Story 4 in there at number 8. And you'll notice that on my list, there is no Lion King. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's on the other list. Oh, that's on the other list. <laughs> All right. Well, my number 8 film, um, coming out of not the animated genre, but live action animated genre, was... Aladdin. I thought Aladdin was fabulous. I mean, Will Smith, It was he needed this movie because if it had bombed and another list that he's going to be on with Gemini Man, I thought it was over for him. It could have been over. Away the whole list. <laughs> I'm just saying. But <laughs> you know what? He did such a great job. And I like the way it's not the same story. My biggest complaint with the live action movies are they are so true to the source material that I've already seen it. And if it's not better than the original, why am I spending my time and money on this? And Aladdin was not. Big, beautiful set pieces, a lot of choreography, dancing. Will Smith was his own genie. He wasn't trying to be Robin Williams. Robin Williams. 
I mean, all families should see this. It's on Disney Plus now, streaming. So if you have Disney Plus, go ahead and get it. And if you don't have it, they got a thing where you can sign up for like a free day, for free for like five days or whatever, and then watch it, then cancel it. <laughs> Disney Plus is going to be bad at me. Free movie. Exactly. But uh, yeah, that's my Aladdin. I loved it. That's my number eight. So number seven for me. I have Aladdin as well. Oh, one higher than you, so you know I wound up to you on that one. <laughs> I also love this movie. I thought for sure Lion King was gonna be my best live action of the year, and Aladdin was just gonna be you know whatever. But I've always loved the original cartoon movie, animated movie, and so I was excited for this one, and I was very happy and pleased with how it did. For me, it starts off on the boat. For me, it kind of like oh this is not gonna be good because I didn't think Will Smith had the best voice at that part. I thought that was weird that now we know that he's already, you know, the genie is a human or whatever. But the rest of the movie is fantastic. The dance numbers, the Prince Ali, like you said, I mean, that is the showstopper right there. They did it wonderfully. Great movie. And Mina Musar, I think his name, who plays Aladdin, does a phenomenal job. Um, we also have our girl, oh, I can't think of her name right now. She was in Charlie's Angels and Power Rangers. She played um, Jasmine. Did a fantastic job, and we love that song, Speechless. Speechless as well. was amazing, yeah. Speechless was um, amazing. Number seven, Aladdin. All right, my number seven film. You know, we are going across the pond, as they say, and this year we've immersed ourselves in international films, specifically Indian cinema. And this was a movie that came out in 2019. Uh, um, you can watch it, I think it's on. Um, Netflix, I know for a fact you can get it on Amazon Prime, and that's Gully Boy. Gully Boy was awesome. Number six? That's my number six film of the whole year. Now, I'm a rap fan, and growing up in New York, in the Bronx during Boy, the 80s, seven, Sorry. that's my number, that's my, yeah. uh, uh, during the 80s, you know, I, I got to see how it was, and now you see how our, our, our culture and our rap music is influencing other countries, you see how they embrace it and make it in their own thing. The acting is amazing in that movie. Check out Gully Boy, you're gonna love it. And, and I promise you that you'll start looking differently at how our music translate and how um, actors in other um, in, in, in other regions, you know, whether it be Hollywood, I mean Hollywood, Bollywood, you know, uh, there's obviously Asians have a huge market themselves there's a lot of talent out there man check out gully boy so gully boy is in my top 10 but not yet so wow. let's see how okay. high i rank it um but i do have an indian film for my number six we saw this we reviewed it on the channel we're talking about badla i have number i have badla at number six this is another film that's on netflix it's got the man amna batcham in it it's got um uh, i cannot remember her name Hopsy is her last name. But anyways, this is a great film where we're talking about just a few characters. And it's kind of like there's a lot of tension going on. There's some stuff about her past that she's trying to this or that. You're trying to figure out as you're watching, you know, what's real, what isn't real. And great performances, great movie, great payoff at the end. Definitely worth the journey you go on. And it's a nice, unique story that I've not seen before. So Bad Luck easily is at my number six. It's definitely suspenseful, suspenseful movie. Definitely suspenseful movie. Okay, my next movie right now. We saw this early in the year. And it was one of the most violent movies I had saw, I saw to that point. And it was John Wick 3. Holy cow. John Wick makes his own... The director has made it his own thing. The way they film action scenes and holy cow! I remember us talking about the 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 one scene with the with the knife and the eyeball. Like, oh man, not for the weak of heart. Definitely not for the if you got a weak stomach. Go watch this movie. But Halle Berry's in it. You know, Keanu Reeves, the man's in it. You know, I, my only question is, how many more of these do you think he can do? Because Keanu Reeves is what fifty years old. This, He's gonna do as many as he needs. This to. requires like a lot of physical acting for what he does in this man. And oh, you gotta watch it. John Wick Three, uh, uh, Parabellum, I believe is the, the name of it. Check it out. We actually have a review on this channel. We got a review for a lot of these movies that we so we're talking about on this channel. Um, you're gonna love it. John Wick Three. Yeah, John Wick Three is not on my list, but it definitely is a great film. I enjoy that one a lot. All right, now we're in the top five. Now you know we, we're bumping it up a little bit, turning up a notch. And my number five is a film I, we don't have a review for. I didn't get around to reviewing it, but I'm talking about Peanut Butter Falcon. 
Now, this is a great character-driven film. We have my um, man, Zach, who plays, he's, he's Down Syndrome in real life, and so he plays a Down Syndrome character, and it's his story. It's not a huge, giant story, but it's his story about how he's trying to find not just inner peace, but trying to find his happiness, and he does not want to be in this facility that the state is running. And you have um, the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey, I can't remember her name, she delivers a really good performance, but for me, you know, Zach is the main star, but the second main star, A or A B, no, one B, excuse me, is got to be Shia LaBeouf. He has made some questionable decisions in wow. his life. Just as recently as just a few months ago, where some kind of situation where he had a problem with a police officer, and he was, I mean, this is a weird guy. So come on, the Shia LaBeouf is best known for two things: being in that Transformer movie, and then the "Just Do It" videos that went viral on the internet. Like, what is wrong with this no, guy? He he has done some very weird things, but you cannot deny his acting prowess, his ability to act. He gives a powerful performance in this movie, and he gives a performance that when you watch it, you're like. I can see the real Shia LaBeouf doing some of that stuff. I mean, <laughs> this guy, he really, I say validity, he brought validity to the film. But Zach, he's a new actor. I want to say this is his first film. He did a phenomenal job. I really think he should be nominated for an award in the Golden Globes. Maybe he will be in the Oscars because this guy, he brings the house down. Peter Butter Falcon, you got to check it out. Okay, my number five, and this is why I was so mad at you, but I could see why because I just I, I couldn't get it in my top in my top three, which was disappointing to myself. But it was Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> I, no. you know, I, I tell you what, I, I, I thought it should have been in my top three, but I I saw the problems that the fans were talking about, and we had these discussions when we reviewed it. I still think, though, that J.J. went in and had to do so much damage control from episode, okay. you know, from, from um, The Last Jedi that he couldn't just tell his own story. This was like a story and a half. It was like two movies. So the story, yes, is still a little convoluted, but you cannot deny Adam Driver is amazing in this movie. He's a great actor. Daisy okay, Ridley's awesome. Daisy Ridley's awesome in this movie. We got Finn. We got Poe. You know, all the characters that we love from um, Episode 7, you know what I mean, came back at the end here. So, for that reason alone, and then again, I don't care. There's no other movie that I can think of that maybe other than a movie, another movie that's going to be on my list, other than Endgame, that... It was such fanfare when you go to the movie theater. You're not just watching a movie. Where do we go? 10 deep to watch it? People go in groups. You got people in costumes. Again, Star Wars is a rite of passage. It's more than just a film, which is why I was shocked you left it off your 10, top 10. You should have saw his Princess Leia costume he put on for the movie. <laughs> it was been... not a sight to see. It wasn't a gold bikini, though. It was. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but uh but no you know i digress <laughs> if you're a star wars fan you gotta watch it i loved it so i'm putting it you know at number five and you know now i'm just ready for the next story you know they killed off skywalkers like oh oh all right so number four getting into it this is a film that i did not have on my anticipated list i didn't even know it was coming out until about a month prior but i'm talking about dark waters I have a lot of these films that usually I'd make fun of people for having on their list, but these movies really resonated with me. Dark Waters got Mark Ruffalo, and it's a true story about a guy who in real life is still fighting this fight, but is uh, it's a true story about this guy who's fighting the um, the Teflon fight. And if you think about that, like the Teflon fight, what is that all about? Teflon is on all of our pans for the most part, but it has been proven, in, and it shows in this movie, it has been proven to cause cancer and to cause death. No joke. Wow. Because when the Teflon, it's great at non-sticking. Um, but when the Teflon gets hot, it sends these fumes out, and the fumes get inside your body, get inside your bloodstream. At the end of this film, it tells us that I think like 95% of all Americans already have it in their bloodstream. Wow. And it has, they did this massive study with like 6,000 or 60,000 people that gave their blood tests because they lived in this community where there was a plant there. And I think the 98% of them all had it inside their bloodstream, and it caused cancer and settlement. Anyways, this is a movie, not just because of how scary that part was, but, I mean, this is, you strap yourself in. There was not a dull moment for a legal drama. 
Those can sometimes go stale. There was not a dull moment in this movie. I loved my experience going to it. I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did, so I had to put it at number four. Okay, wow. That's terrifying. Wow. Okay. Look it up. Teflon. I'm going to have to check it out. All right. Well, my number four movie is a Netflix property, and you know what? It, it, It was... It really is a change of pace from what we've been getting in Hollywood with these big action set pieces where not a lot happens in this movie. There's a, a lot of dialogue, There's, but there's such great acting. And we're talking about The Irishman. The Irishman is amazing. I guarantee you this thing is going to win. If somebody's going to win an Oscar in this movie because the performances from Robert De Niro, from Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, a guy that has, in all his movies, he's either a clown, like in Home Alone, or he's a gangster, like in um, Goodfellas. Goodfellas. You know. Here, he is so reserved, he is so soft-spoken, and he's the men- the most menacing, in my opinion, he's ever been. Holy cow, I'm telling you, The Irishman is awesome. This is why Netflix is going to survive. People thought that Netflix was going to die after the streaming war started. I tell you what, DC Universe app, I think, is going to die pretty soon. And people are already mad at Disney because right after Christmas, they started taking content off, like Home Alone. People are like, what's going on? Where, you know, Netflix, not only can they get other properties, they don't have to be uh, uh, religious to just Disney content or just um, DC content. They can go out and create their own content. And again, two honorable mentions. Uh, in my honorable mentions, I had um, Marriage Story. That's also a Netflix movie, okay? And now you have up this high, watch it, The Irishman. This guy works for Netflix. I'm t- I do not work for Netflix. I wish I worked for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make more money than I'd be teaching. But check it out. It's awesome. It, and again, you don't have to go to the movie theater. You know, it, it's free. It drops that day. You got to love it. I love Netflix. I love streaming. Yeah, there's so many of your movies that I have not seen yet. You've got to catch it. Uh, you've got to catch it. But man, you make me want to watch these films. All right, number three. Here we go. Number three. I want to put it at number two, but it's at number three, and this is where we're talking about Gully Boy. This is going to be wow. Indian's entry into the Academy Awards. Now, every foreign country gets one entry, and then the Academy decides which are going to be the five nominated, nominated films. I think India's had three times a nominated film. Lagan was one of them. Okay. But they're pushing for Gully Boy, and I'm hoping that the Academy... I mean, I haven't seen the other films that are foreign films. Maybe they're better. I can't imagine they are. Right. This is a film amongst films. This is way better than 8 Mile, and I love 8 Mile. But this is just put, throws 8 Mile, you know, blows it out of the water. This film, you've got to check it out. I think it's still on Netflix or Amazon Prime. I can't remember which one it is. came out this year. But Ranveer Singh, he plays the lead character. He puts on a clinic. He does a phenomenal job. He does his own rapping, his own freestyling, and he holds his own very very well in this but it's a great story and it's a realistic story and you just gotta check it out i can't talk enough about this we have a review for gully boy we have reactions to the trailers but it's my number three for the year right well my number three movie you know i remember i watched this movie and i told you up until that point i thought robert uh, downey jr was gonna win uh, the Oscar for Best Actor because and holy I, and I laughed at and him. he laughed and I tell you I'm telling you he was so amazing in Endgame until I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood holy cow that's number three that's my number three film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for a movie that and it's a Tarantino, Tarantino film so he's done this before with movies like Reservoir Dogs where not a lot happens not a lot happens. But just the interaction, the way he does dialogue, the emotionality he brings to it. Leonardo DiCaprio is fabulous in it. I mean, some of the best acting I think I, I've ever seen him do. I, I think it's way better than what he did in The Revenant, okay? He <laughs> was, he was cla- hands down, I'd say his second or third best acting performance. And then wow. Brad Pitt. Holy cow, Brad Pitt is awesome in this movie now i know it's mirrored in some controversy because oh you know it, it's not true to you know uh, uh, uh the actual story and you know the way they depicted bruce lee in there who cares he never said it was authentic okay <laughs> tarantino's movies are never going to be authentic this is Always not based on some fictional ex- exactly okay and, and the way that they portrayed the manson family in there and what happens who cares it's his own interpretation of it watch the movie and enjoy the acting performances these two guys put on an acting clinic 
I tell you the one down part about the movie was that Margot Robbie was in there. And if I was her agent, I would have said, no, nah, I don't want to put her in there because she gets overshadowed, man. You forget she's even in this movie because of how well these two guys command the screen, man. So definitely check it out. Uh, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Guarantee he's going to be nominated for Best Actor. And, and I mean, the question is, honestly, who's going to win? Either Brad Pitt or I guess Brad Pitt would be supporting actor because he's 1B. Leonardo DiCaprio would be Best Actor, but... I mean, man, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I haven't seen the movie yet, and I know, I know, I know. I can't wait to see it. I keep having gotten around to it. I love Tarantino films, but it seems like people either love it and they have it on their top ten, or they can't stand it. And I'm thinking the people that love it are the, the people that are, are bigger fans of all film and are, you know, kind of like us where we do this just for fun. You know, they really enjoy film, and they understand the Tarantino element that he brings to his films. I can't wait because I do enjoy Tarantino films. I love Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio as actors. But I do think, from what I'm hearing, Brad Pitt could have a chance to finally win his first acting award. All right, his first acting Oscar, sorry. So, number two. It's not number one, but it's my second favorite film, my second favorite experience, the one I enjoyed the most going into it, and I'm talking about Endgame. We're talking about, I got the Stark hat on, comic book wow. film. Endgame is number two. I didn't say number ten. Endgame, this was quite the experience, but, and I hold true to my other review that we have on Endgame, I enjoyed Infinity Wars just a little better. We did not do a top 10 for any other year, but that probably would have been number one that year, Infinity Wars was, but Endgame is still a powerhouse of a film. This movie, for MCU fans, and we're talking about, we haven't had to wait like Star Wars for 40 years to get to it, we're talking about the last 10 or so years. This movie, um puts everything together. We have some great characters, obviously, but they're doing some great things. With the 20 movies, having these characters do different things is phenomenal. But when you're talking about the last 45 minutes, I mean, that is probably the best 45 minutes of any battle scene of any movie of all time because of the other 20 movies that come in together and lead to it. When Captain America gets that hammer, when Captain America says Avengers Assemble, when Chills, Falcon, right now, oh. I gotta watch this again today. When Falcon says, "On your, on your left," oh man, ah. and I love it because when I'm watching it as a big fan, when we hear "On your left," we know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, it was fantastic, and I had no problem with any of the stuff during that sequence. But getting to that, there was some parts where I did find myself a little bored, even that first time through. There are some parts where. I thought jokes did not land, and we're talking about Marvel films, MCU. Right. Their jokes usually always land. And in an Avengers movie, you gotta be kidding me. So it's at number two, but I can't think of a better full on theater experience than I had than any other movie this year, and I've had since Infinity Wars the year prior. That experience with all those fans that Thursday night was amazing. I'll never forget it. All right, man. Well, my number two film In game. My number two film was Joker, okay? <laughs> Again, comic book fan. I told you at the beginning, very biased Joker. But, you know, those people that would argue that Joker... And I went in myself originally thinking this was a comic book movie. It is... I would say it's a movie loosely based on a comic book, okay? It is more... Uh, 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 Oh man, what would I say? This movie is it's so it's multi layered first and foremost, okay? But it's a deconstruction of, of, of mental illness, and it really tells us how we create these villains, okay, in society that then at the end come back and haunt us. The, whether you're the rich, the affluent, doesn't matter who you are, it's gonna affect you somehow, some way. We cannot just throw them away. And this movie was so. I mean, if Brad Pitt does not, not Brad Pitt. I'm sorry, if Leonardo DiCaprio does not win Best Actor, okay, for, for this year. This is why. Joaquin Phoenix. Holy cow. This guy was amazing in this movie. It gave me chill, chills. I saw this movie and I'm thinking to myself, wow, what a gutsy performance by him. What a gutsy vision by the director. It stayed with me. And again, it's how these movies make you feel. I enjoyed all the controversy it sparked on the internet because whether you love the movie or hate it, it called it was a cause for debate, okay? And a lot of people started saying, well, yeah, you know, they forgot that in the 80s because of the Reagan era, we shut down a lot of these mental hospitals. So people that should be getting treatment are now either in the streets or in jail. And 
man, the social commentary this movie had was amazing. Again, it better win the Oscar. Joaquin Phoenix, my hat's off to you, sir. That was an acting clinic. I tell you, watch the movie. I will tell you this, though. It is not for kids because there's violence in all movies. But I thought that this was the most graphic, realistic violence I had seen in a while, man. And it really stays with you when you watch some of these scenes. You're like, oh, wow. Especially that apartment scene. Oh, wow. But, all right, I digress. That was my number two film. Nick, what was your number one film? All right, so number one, we're looking at all the films for 2019 that I saw. And as you can notice already, I haven't seen them all. But for me, my number one film is Joker. Oh, I was okay. going to unfriend you if you didn't say that. And I was going to unfriend you. I am a comic book movie fan. I really am, but I didn't plan it. I didn't go into it saying my top ten has to have the two comic movies at the top. But in this case, it did. And Joker, the reason why it won out over Endgame is, first of all, I am more of a DC guy than a Marvel, but that didn't play into it at all. Um, the theater experience with Endgame was unbelievable. There was moments that were just nonstop. But Joker, in my opinion, is a better film from start to finish. There is not one part of this film I did not like, I did not agree with. There Are there certain things I would have loved to see, like the Cape Crusader come through, Batman, and do whatever? Sure. But it's, that's not his story. And they had the guts to tell an origin film that's an actual um, critically acclaimed film that is going to be nominated for Best Picture in the Oscars. And the only other comic book movie that's done that before was Dark Knight. And this is a better overall film than Dark Knight. Yes. Even though Dark Knight has, Agreed. once again, the Joker. I'm not sure why the Joker translates so well on film. Sorry, Jared Leto. But that those performances. But Joaquin Phoenix, like you said, he delivers in this film. But even all the side characters. I mean, it's a gritty film. You're talking about New York City in the 1970s, 1980s. And we're talking about some dark places that they're visiting and it's just complete enjoyment for me all the way through. I knew what I was going to when I went and saw it, and it gave me everything that I wanted, but it gave me so much more stuff that I wasn't expecting. And so overall, from beginning to end, and talking about comic book, talking about make it as real as possible and as ground as possible, I didn't think the violence was, violence was too graphic or too much. I mean, and there's so many conversations you can have. That last scene where he's all bloodied up and he comes out of the car and he stands up to take his bow, so to speak. It's a great film. Great film. Number Jack. one. Again, goosebumps again. All right, well, my number one film, guys. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> no surprise, all right? No surprise. Avengers Endgame. Let me tell you, when you talk about the theater experience, I've been to tons of movies in my, in my days. I've never been to one where collectively the audience was feeling the same thing. As so many times we're sitting there and you just heard sniffling and sighing and because people were crying and then people cheering every single person when Cap is down for the count. And it, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it already, shame on you, watch it now, buy it, keep supporting this movie. But when like Cap- it doesn't have enough support. I know, right? Two billion, biggest movie of all time. But when Cap is down for the count, and he Thanos is now coming at Captain America. Iron Man is just uh, uh, um, incapacitated. I should, and so is uh, Thor, right? He's out cold, knocked out cold. And Iron Man, I mean, um, Captain America straps up the shield. The broken Here comes, shield. Yeah, broken shield. Here comes Thanos with all his legion. And he stands up there. He's like, he's going to face him on his own because he's Captain America. Chris Evans, I love you. I haven't said that to many, too many other men's in my, men in my life. But I love you for the scene. Ooh. And then... When all of a sudden you hear on your left, dude, I mean, the theater just erupted. And then when everybody stands and he says, Avengers assemble, it was the greatest line I think delivered in all movies, all time. It was the greatest experience I had ever had. The entire theater erupted. I'd never experienced something like that. And not because it made so much money or not because I'm a huge cam comic book fan, but it was because it was the best theater going experience I've ever had in my entire life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was just amazing. And, and I, I cried several times during this movie. Big baby. I know I'm a big baby, but uh, yeah, Avengers Endgame number one. We hope you enjoy our top 10. We hope you enjoy our comments about this or that. Like he said, we have reviews on at least half of the movies we talked about, if not right. more than half. And, we want to know what is your top 10. What's your top five if you want to, don't want to type in 10? 
Let us know what you think. Support the channel if you want to by liking, subscribing, by joining our Patreon page. We have all the information down below. But thank you so much for a 2019, a great 2019. It was the first year of our YouTube channel. We started around April, but we didn't really get going until the summertime. Thank you so much for a wonderful first year in YouTube. And as always, until next time, on your left. I knew that was coming. <laughs>